Now, as you all know, every few years in this galaxy relatively far away and in the past compared to a civilization that we know nothing about, the Empire creates a Death Star, or a Death Star-like device. It's almost like they're running out of ideas. Nevertheless, you are tasked with destroying these devices, and to do so, of course, you will be using proton torpedoes. But before you jump in your wings of various letterings, quiet the back wedge! You will need to know what these proton torpedoes actually do and how simple particles can bring down the Death Star's plans. According to Star Wars canon, proton torpedoes are missiles that carry a warhead full of protons. Duh. Upon detonation, these warheads release a directed cloud of these particles at high velocity at the target. Physically speaking, this does not make for a traditional explosive. So what are the advantages of a weapon like this, and why would the Rebels use it against a target as important as the Death Star? First of all, protons are subatomic particles with a positive charge. They are the building blocks of atoms and therefore matter. Inside of an atomic nucleus like helium, protons are more or less harmless and their positive charge is canceled out by the electrons whizzing around said nucleus. But get those protons free and moving at high velocities like a few percent of the speed of light and they become weapons. A high velocity charged particle with mass, like a proton, slows down by smashing into other atoms. Sorry, let me take off this stupid uh, helmet. When a proton hits other atoms, it can rip electrons from them, which fly off and then may have enough energy to rip electrons off of those atoms, and so on and so forth in a cascade. This is ionizing radiation. It's creating ions as it goes. And this can change how these atoms interact with each other and produces heat. This is why ionizing radiation can be so damaging to us. These broken and displaced atoms will start acting differently. And if this happens inside of our DNA, it can cause abnormalities, even cancer. Oh! Oh! Ow, that helps nothing. This ionizing radiation could be dangerous to Death Star material too. Depending on the protons and their energies, they could weaken the metal structures inside of the Death Star by displacing atoms in those solids. They could disrupt or outright destroy electronics and circuitry because of how many electrons the ionizing radiation would be moving around where they're not supposed to be. And the protons could cause explosive boiling in Inside of the Death Star itself because of the heat they would generate with their kinetic energy on impact. In fact, particle beam weapons like proton torpedoes are potentially so effective that the US military has been looking into them as offensive and defensive weapons since the 1980s with the Star Wars program. No, seriously, we had plans. You should take the plans. Take the plans. Ah! Using protons as a weapon has another potential advantage that would be perfect for a Death Star killer. Precision. Ah! Bullseye. Womp rats are huge. They are over six feet long. In space, without the Earth's atmosphere or magnetic field to protect you, X-rays and gamma rays and charged particles like our protons are a lot more dangerous. And therefore, you would need shielding to protect yourself. Shielding is especially important if we as a species ever want to traverse the vastness of space without significant complications. X-rays and gamma rays don't have charge and they don't have mass and therefore they don't interact with matter in the same way. They are much more penetrative and that means you need in general, much more shielding to protect yourself fully. On the other hand, protons and other charged particles bump into stuff as they pass through matter, so in general, they don't need as much shielding. And because of how they bump into other atoms as they move, charged particles moving through material have a calculable stopping point inside of a material. Now, I know it doesn't sound like it, but this could be a proton torpedo's real advantage over something more conventional, like a bomb or a laser, laser sword. Laser yes. sword. Laser sword. A laser sword. Whatever that would be. 
Here is a graph of how much energy some kind of radiation will put into a material depending on how far it has traveled through that material. This is a line for a charged particle like a proton. And as you can see, the energy is deposited all the way more and more and more and more until there is an abrupt increase. This is because the energy deposited by a charged particle is inversely proportional to the square of its velocity, meaning that most of the energy it drops will happen right before the particle comes to a dead stop. This peak is called Bragg's peak, and where it happens inside of a material depends on that material, that particle, and that particle's energy. But in theory, how far a charged particle like a proton can burrow into a material can be precisely controlled. By contrast, this is how something like a photon, like an X-ray photon, deposits energy as it moves through the material. It deposits most of that energy at the surface, and then it exponentially decreases all the way through without ever really stopping. <laughs> so uncivilized. The difference in radiation peaks here lets us make precise strikes in real life, in cancer surgery. So-called proton therapy is a cancer treatment where doctors use particle accelerators to fling protons into people's bodies, but in a precisely controlled way. They can control where the Bragg's peak is going to occur inside of someone's tissue, and so all of the protons irradiate a tumor right at the tumor and not beyond. X-rays are also used in cancer treatment, but while they can hit a tumor, they can also go beyond the tumor because they are much more penetrative and can potentially damage other vital organs inside someone's body. Proton beam therapy then is a more targeted, a more elegant weapon in the fight against cancer. And fun Star Wars fact, a health economist at Harvard in 2012 called proton beam therapy the Death Star of American medical technology. If rebel engineers took advantage of protons' penetrative properties, then proton torpedoes could deliver the precision necessary to destroy the Death Star. <laughs> this is way easier than listening to a ghost. <laughs> Knowing what we now know about proton radiation, a proton torpedo could be set up like this. Like a missile with a cloud of protons, essentially a plasma, electromagnetically contained inside of its warhead. Then it could be set up in such a way that when its warhead met its target, that containment would rupture and fling its protons towards the target, kind of like a particle accelerator. Then after the warhead is released from its missile, as we see happen in A New Hope, all the warhead would have to do is fly along until it found its target. How did it turn 90 degrees like that? We don't have time? Okay, but in this scene, in A New Hope, the word precise is said twice. It implies that the wedge, put that down! It implies that the rebellion doesn't want a conventional weapon to take out the Death Star. For example, Star Trek's photon torpedoes do release an immense amount of energy. They are antimatter bombs, over 200,000 trillion joules if you're converting three kilograms of matter into pure energy. But because they are simply bombs, they are emitting their energy out in all directions in a three-dimensional sphere, and so necessarily only 50% of that energy will strike a target, and when it does, it will be all over that target. Imprecise. Instead, I think the Rebellion is referring to a more tactical weapon that can precisely destroy some critical component or piece of circuitry that will lead to the chain reaction inside of the Death Star. I think in theory a proton torpedo's warhead could do this with Bragg peaks and energies expertly calculated to destroy with heat and disrupt with ionization kind of like proton beam therapy for the Death Star's innards that lead to the complete destruction of the station. So, how could proton torpedoes destroy the Death Star? Well, if Rebels really needed a strike to be precise, then they could take advantage of protons' penetrative properties to make a surgical strike against the innards of the Death Star, like we do in advanced cancer treatments. Militaries around the world have been looking into a weapons concept just like this for years. 
1989, Air Force Colonel Thomas Meyer described prototype particle beam weapons that could destroy and or disrupt the circuitry of incoming missiles to the Los Angeles Times. And he literally said, we call them proton torpedoes. With that quote alone, proton torpedoes might be one of the most accurate things in all of Star Wars. Of course, that's not that hard to do. A laser sword, laser sword, laser sword, laser <sighs> because sword, Because science. Sword. Get out of here, Lucas! Stop trying to special my dish! But if those warheads did turn 90 degrees like it looks in A New Hope, I know there's some perspective difference. It could be traveling in an arc, but if it actually did travel at 90 degrees, those warheads would have to apply an acceleration in a different direction than its travel, meaning that it would technically have to decelerate in the order of back of the envelope calculation thousands of Gs, which would rip the warhead apart unless it was made of something really cool. Thank you so much for watching, Jeff. If you want more of me, go back to Nerdist.com and check out Musquatch with me and my friend Dan Casey, or go to Project Alpha at ProjectAlpha.com and sign up now for a free 30-day trial. And then if you do that, you can get this show two days earlier than everyone else. How cool is that? And follow me and Because Science on these social handles here.